Greetings everyone, my name is Alexander Pajkanovic and I teach several courses in electronics at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering University of Banja Luka. It is my pleasure today to present um, the topic of free IC design in education. Uh, basically, I will be sharing some experiences that we collected over the last several years in uh, using the free resources to create uh, the IC design uh, curricula at the university. Uh, I'll first provide a quick introduction and um, the motivation that lies behind this work and uh, the general idea. Then we'll dive into looking at uh, why do we actually need the tools, what's all the fuss about, why do we need the PDK and then we'll discuss uh, the uh, possibilities and uh, opportunities with non-free and free uh, tools, pros and cons. Uh, for those of you not into IC design, I'll explain what PDK is in just about a minute. So the CMOS fabrication, uh, the, the CMOS IC fabrication, the IC being integrated circuit, is the most uh, sophisticated technology process commercially available on Earth. Therefore, um, it is not an exaggeration to say that its importance is paramount in the education of every uh, generation of electronics engineers uh, in, 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 in the years to come. So that puts sort of a burden on our shoulders, uh, the, the educators in the area of IC design, uh, in a way that we, uh, we, we, we have to find a way to bring IC courses to the universities but in a way that students get actual real-world silicon proven experience that's not an easy task and, and, and main obstacles are actually paperwork and as it has always been with the university's um, funding so uh, one of the aspects of this paper will be a revolution that is happening as we speak and I'll talk about that in, in, in the later part of the paper but for now let's just say that this the main times the, the main points in time are when the first chip design using only the free tools was fabricated uh, basically silicon proven and then the next moment is when the first pdk was uh, when 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 a when a first open source pdk appeared in public uh, last year so what i'm trying to say is that with this, there are no more excuses. Basically, we have to make sure that every electronic student should work on a real-world example during uh, the studies. The general motivation behind this work, and this work is actually just uh, one of the smaller pieces in, in, in a larger puzzle, but basically the general motivation between our efforts in providing the free IC design in education is to learn, build and grow upon the fact that mature nodes uh, perform very well in so many areas where low cost, low power consumption and stability are of interest. Um, we also want to join the effort to demonstrate real silicon examples designed using open uh, tools. Uh, we also want to popularize these tools, the technology and electronics in general. And as a sort of um, summary, we basically want to build a world-class university level course at uh, zero or close to zero investment. The motivation for this particular paper is to share our own experiences from teaching free and open source analog and digital IC design uh, at the University of Banja Luka. Uh, to look, uh, this uh, paper is based on what we have right now, but in case uh, there are people interested in how we uh, actually come to this point and, and the, the, the phases that we went through to actually come to the, uh, uh, to, to achieve uh, what we have right now, quite a stable um, program for, for both of the courses, analog and digital, uh, you can find that in these uh, papers published across the last uh, five or so years. So the three main things that need to meet together to actually have the uh, IC see the sun is uh, the idea, the tools, and the PDK. So the idea is basically the schematic, the topology, the, the, what we want to realize. The tools are the software um, applications that we have to use 
to create the uh, prepare uh, the files such that um, an IC may be implemented based on that. Uh, so where circuit theory um, where circuit theory produces files that are uh, manufacturable. And then the, um, the PDK is actually a, an abbreviation of a project design kit and that's basically the summary, the, the collection of the data um, related to devices that the factory can uh, fabricate. So this contains models and information of the devices such as transistors, diodes, resistors and so on. And then when we work on an idea within the tools to, cr to solve a problem, we have to use this information uh, in order to make our uh, results uh, uh, achievable and our design manufacturable. So the tools, uh, the silicon foundries, these, are, um, th these came a bit later. Uh, not at the beginning of IC design. So if there were no tools and no silicon foundries, um, we could say that we wouldn't have any problems. However, um, the, back in the 60s and the 70s, like half a century ago, when the whole um, storyline of the integrated circuit design started, the designers and some of the legends, uh, some of the pioneers are shown the, on the right-hand side, Bob Weidler and um, Yanis Tavidis, uh, they, they would have to make the circuits work in an unproven technology. They had to lay, lay the circuits, circuits manually on, the, on a light table and basically they would have to produce chip themselves in the lab. Since there is no silicon foundry, there are no tools, they would have to work with, with dangerously high temperatures and, and in poisonous fumes. Um, privileges such as uh, working with a simulator was, would, would, would be just a dream for, for most of the people. Uh, fortunately for the Berkeley, crew uh, right next door the, the first simulator was was being developed at, at the same time so they, they had this opportunity back then to use the punch cards to create to simulate circuits so um, once the potential of ICs was recognized the market exploded creating further markets like consumer industrial military electronics and so on and therefore this need for uh, using the computers um, of course powered by the advance of the PC and again that was also powered by the advance of IC and, and spiraling each other uh, this created uh, this whole in, in, uh, industry of electron design automation or computer aided designs these are abbre abbreviated with EDA or CAD tools so um, this industry um, made uh, this created a new struggle to come up with a tool capable of following the technology process. Um, by today we have three vendors uh, well established and their commercial commercial licenses per seat per year are well into five or even six figures. Uh, they all do provide discounts for, for higher education startups under certain limitations and yet uh, that still requires funding and paperwork is by far no less uh, in these in these cases. So why do we need the free tools? Well, we need the free tools because industry standards are so much expensive uh, for even cutting edge technology processes are in question. And um, we would like to be able to work with the IC not encumbered by this, um, by this um, feature of, I want to work with older nodes that are capable of, produ of, of functioning properly, but we don't want to uh, spend so much money on tools. So the free tools have been around since the 80s, but they're pretty much unusable in practice, or they have been unusable in practice for the following two reasons. First of all, they wouldn't support the new technology nodes, and that's not an easy task. It's not an easy job to support uh, the development at the rate that these new nodes were dictated. Um, and also the silicon foundries became a common place by the 80s, so neither one of these uh, silicon foundries, basically a factory that uh, creates implements in physics, in, in the physical uh, substrate of silicon or whatever other technology might be in question. Uh, the, the plan, the design that the circuit designer created using the tools. So if a silicon foundry, if the factory, or sometimes you call them just fab, does not support the tool with their PDK, does not provide the information um, of, of their devices in a way that the free tool can recognize, 
um, this information, then basically the tool is useless. There were some, uh, there are some uh, ways around it, but they're not really around it. They're still uh, encumbered by different um, problems. For more details, please contact me or just look online. So anyway, uh, whatever that done, whatever that may be, we still are subject to NDAs and fabrication still must be paid. So um, what changed in about last 10 years or so uh, is this company, Ifablis, took up the fight to actually um, bring the free tools to the point that they can actually be usable to create uh, uh, fabricable, uh, manufacturable silicon. This has been built upon uh, several projects that sustained by Tim Edwards and some other uh, well-known free tools such as NG Spies and Yosis and, and so many more. So basically, uh, for the last few years, we already have a fully functional tool chain available at no cost and also without any documentation um, uh, 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 apart from honoring the open source license. So. Uh, we would still have to obtain the PDK under an NDA uh, and the major limitation here is that such design would, would not be an open hardware. Uh, the first still that this great breakthrough has been achieved by Tim Edwards, uh, the first IC fabricate, uh, IC fabricate, the first IC designed only by free tools has been fabricated and this is called Raven, a small digital system. Uh, you, very soon more people join forces and the most prominent project being ASIC-1. They created this band gap reference. I'm hoping to see some results. And we were also fortunate to take part as well among the first in the world. For more details, please check the Intel 2020 paper where we, uh, together with the students at our department, designed two integrated circuits uh, using one of the XFAB nodes, uh, working with only free tools. This was uh, thanks to Edmund Hammenberger and Symbiotic EDA and, of course, uh, great support from Team Edwards. So to revisit the three things that we spoke, when we have the free tools, we the, the only thing that we need to create free open hardware uh, down at the nanoscale level is uh, basically we have the we, we just need the PDK. So that's exactly what happened in the June in June 2020. The Skywater 130 CMOS nanometer CMOS PDK has been open sourced. Um, that basically sort, sorts out our um, first problem, the paperwork that I brought up. And then the thing the, 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 the thing that uh, also um, is really important is that the other problem has been solved as well, at least um, for the time being, is that Google is actually funding uh, fab uh, fabrication for open source design. So there, was, there were already two runs, so fabrication of silicon uh, designed using free tools and using the free PDK is free of charge with uh, Google Shuttle runs. Uh, we're hoping that there will be more of these. Here are some information about the devices from the Skywater. I wouldn't go into these graphs. They're just um, a nice way to show uh, how we can um, provide very relevant information very quickly with the scripts that we developed here in Paniluka, which are also available online for free. We have two courses and we have created um, analog circuit design course where we, since this is the first time that students are working with this, um, these tools, we first have to take them th on a journey through Linux, Python and Spice and then we uh, take care of uh, devices and modeling, then we take them through the um, these new tools, the schematic entry, the layout tool, magic and so on. Uh, uh, as far as theory goes, we work with the basic amplifiers and then we uh, move on to advanced simulation techniques, advanced layout techniques, matching, and we fi finish with the operational the, the design of the operational amplifier. For more details on the op operational amplifier, please check the paper we published just recently, just a month ago at a uh, meal conference. As far as the dis digital circuit design course is uh, concerned, we have decided to move on to develop a course, a processor course, and the first core that we developed from scratch is Hack. For, for, for more information, please visit this nantetetris.org. Um, at, at some point, this was taught at Stanford, and then we uh, moved to Berkeley, <laughs> figuratively speaking, because we start learning Chisel. Chisel is a hardware construction language as opposed to the Verlog or VHDL, which are standard hardware description languages. 
uh, for more details on Chisel RS5 and, and in general everything <laughs> shown in this slide please check out the IC Hetran uh, 2021 paper that we that was also published just a couple of weeks back um, just years ago uh, this was impossible to imagine we have our students using real PDK with uh, actual tools that can provide silicon proven design so we get to work on a real world example that we hope also to fabricate and we we have already done one fabrication with xfab with the help of a of um funded by symbiotic eda and uh, through euro practice and we hope to um, spread this um, further and develop further and uh, this 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 is the point where i would like to show my respect and uh, send out a warm thank you to all those who made this happen. Uh, this also brings a great responsibility, as I said, there are no more excuses. We have to, at least try, to provide all our students with the possibility to work on real-world silicon-proven examples. Um, of course, the three things the, the three things that I spoke about are, of course, a big deal. However, uh, what I found, found uh, extremely important is to keep in touch with people who excel in this area for so many years uh, so uh, keep an eye on labs homeworks and projects from Berkeley Stanford and MIT that's that's it's a very good practice uh, we hope to in the next semester we hope to upgrade the digital design tool chain to go for open lane instead of Qflow that's kind of becoming a standard now and we want to include the open run uh, tool as well uh, we are expecting to get involved in the uh, third uh, MPW by funded by Google. Uh, all our contributions are available online, so the scripts, the uh, graphs, the everything. And um, thank you for your attention. Please contact me if you have any uh, further questions. This is my email. I would like to discuss this or any other topic and, of course, the possibility of collaboration. Thank you very much. I have one question, and it's also for Dr. Paikanovic and for uh, our colleague Marko Micevic or Uro Radenkovic. I know he is also here. Um, so uh, Italo Vignoli was mentioning at the plenary lecture at the beginning of the session, uh, talk on digital sovereignty. So I'm really interested because you two talked, among others, how important are open source technologies in education and what, what you do at your university. So do you plan to teach students about digital sovereignty? Because it's also important for open hardware, though I think it will address it only in free software. Some plans or thoughts of that? Um, the question is for me, yes? Yes. Yes. Ah, okay. Um, so the thing uh, that I face, uh, and, and this is partially related to, to what you just asked, is that uh, the students who study electronics uh, usually go by uh, programming in a way that they kind of just want to pass the exam. Um, and this is somehow, this used to work for a long time, but not anymore, especially in the IC design world. And especially because you're using so much different um, tools, we're trying to make a tool chain. And hence I have introduced Python as a, a mandatory part of the course on analog IC design, which sounds a bit um, strange, but it's simply based on experience. It's simply something that has to be done. We need, I, I need to bring the students of electronics up to speed with basic uh, uh, or not just basic, a bit more advanced programming. So while I do that, I speak about open source and I try to uh, stress how important this is because if there wasn't for that, back in 2015, when I first started teaching IC design at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, it would end up with LT Spice, just some simulations. Because um, it, this is the main topic that I try to kind of uh, spread to them and bring to their uh, attention that there are so many things that so many people did only for the love of learning and sharing. And so this digital sovereignty thing is something I, um, I was, let's say, implicitly aware of, but not to the point that he, uh, where he actually uh, 
um, spoke today, not to the detail that he explained today. So, and, and that was called uh, maybe the, the name under digital sovereignty. Yeah, I guess. yeah, yeah. The sovereignty is, is, a, is a very nice way to pack the whole um, storyline. So, yes, uh, this is one of the reasons why I. Uh, I, I do touch upon these topics when I speak to students, and <clears throat> I really think it's important because uh, you get involved in things without actually knowing you are involved. Uh, and this free software, uh, using free software to design analog circuits, actually brings this uh, to the to the surface. And for this reason, digital sovereignty is uh, an important topic for me and for students, of course. <laughs>